Uh, it's so good to be here. Thank you for having us this morning. And um, actually, I just feel so blessed. We do. I feel blessed to be here. And worship was incredible. And uh, lots of familiar faces. I'm just realising I've got not only my wife, but I've got one of my daughters, one of my grandchildren, and my sister. So you better watch out who you're talking to this morning. We're all connected. Um, but it's great to be here. Thank you for having us. And, and look, I just want to celebrate uh, with you all that God's doing in this place at Arise. It's incredible. The stories I hear are just, um, just amazing. And, you know, he, he is building his church. And, you know, it takes pushing through. It takes um, facing a lot of, you know, um, cultural, social, spiritual restraints and opposition to actually build a church. And, um, you know, you along with Alan and Jackie are doing that. And this church, I can see growth, I can see maturity. And, you know, it's to God, to God be the glory. It's his church. So it's, lovely. it's just so good to be here. As um, some of you would know, I, I probably haven't met some of you, but some of you know me really well. Um, we have been pastors down at Ballina Seacoast Church um, for 23 years, and we set aside in December, and um, we've officially handed the church over to a great young couple, John and Steph Hebert. Um, and Steph actually grew up from a baby um, in the church at Seacoast. Uh, and uh, so it's perfect that her and her husband have taken over as pastors of, of the church. Uh, John has, was with YWAM for 17 years and travelled uh, around the world with YWAM and a um, great lot of experience. They have two beautiful children. So we're really thrilled at how God put all that together. Um, but, there, you know, there are changes. There are huge, huge changes for everyone. Uh, John and Steph taking on a brand new responsibility in ministry. Um, and um, the Seacoast Church family are now getting used to new pastors. Um, it's not Jim and Venice anymore, it's John and Steph, and they bring their own flavour and, and style. Um, and, uh, you know, we're cheering them on, um, even though it's from a bit of a distance at the moment because we, we thought it was right to step aside from the church for six months before we go back, and that'll, we'll be going back at the end of May. So Venice and I have a, a, a new journey uh, of discovery for ourselves, um, for what is ahead, because, um, you know, we know that as, as long as God gives us breath, that we are here to be ambassadors for Christ. So we've got a blank slate. I can't tell you how incredibly exciting that feels, to have a blank slate before us with our future in ministry uh, and in life. Um, we're, com we're stepping into a completely new season of life together. And, you know, often the, the, the changes of seasons in our life require a transition, and we've been through a, a transition time. It's a time of waiting, preparing, seeking God with all of our heart, you know, for, for what he has planned. And as we've navigated through this, um, this change of season, we've experienced all kinds of emotions, um, all kinds of mindsets, other people's opinions and uh, expectations, We've had our INC, which we love, our movement. Um, we've had the guidance and support from them. And it sure is a journey. We love this movement of INC that you are part of, always have since the early days of COC. And, uh, you know, we've been part of this movement since about 1992. So this whole concept of changing seasons of, in life is particularly fresh for us right now. But this message is not actually about us. I believe that this message is for you personally and for all of us together as the body of Christ. And I feel that there are some here, uh, some of you who are actually experiencing a form of transition or a change, some kind of change in your own lives. Perhaps, it's, um, perhaps you know, you're in a waiting period in that transition period where one season is not quite finished but the, but the new one hasn't quite yet started. It might be related to your personal growth and maturity. Perhaps it's related to your family, your workplace, your ministry. And these changes of seasons can be something that, you know, we can freely cho choose them and accept them. After all, life naturally has seasons. But they can also come upon us unexpectedly. Sometimes other people make decisions that affect our lives significantly. 
and other times circumstances uh, cause us to have to take a different path. And if that's you, I hope that this morning I have a few words of wisdom to share with you um, that will encourage you and, and hopefully strengthen you as you transition into your new season. And if it doesn't directly apply to you right now, it will, eventually, because that's life. Seasons inevitably change. But you're not alone. And you're not simply drifting through life aimlessly. God has a plan. And he has also given us the gift of his Holy Spirit to discern the seasons, to understand what is happening, to be strengthened with wisdom, with might and with power in every season of our life. Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And as people of God, people of the Spirit, we have a responsibility. It's, it's part of our calling to know what times and seasons that we live in. Because then we know how to respond. We know how to pray. Um, we know how to navigate it all in a way that we, we can remain strong and full of faith, steadfast and secure, and be a light to the world that is around about us, that is growing darker and darker by the day. Seasons change, but God never does. And the core of who we are as Christians, that doesn't change either. Hebrews 6.19 in the Passion Translation says, We have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor, holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat in the heavenly realm beyond the, the sacred threshold. I love that verse. It's one of my favourite scriptures. Your life, your soul is anchored in God, anchored in Christ and actually anchored in heaven. Seasons come and go, but you remain secure, steadfast, anchored and immovable. And I feel like as I'm declaring those words, it's speaking prophetically over you. God is speaking over us, uh, each one of us. Uh, as a body together. I just want to share part of um, David's story, his transition into his new season as the king of Israel. Uh, David was, an anoint he was anointed a king by, by Samuel, the prophet, but then he had this extended time of waiting before he actually um, took up that office and that he was called to. And during his time of transition, he had to guard himself against King Saul's threats uh, and his active pursuit of David. Saul wanted to take David out completely. He was driven by jealousy, contempt and all kind of evil desires. And I believe some of you, some of you have a, a new season coming and yet you find yourself having to, to dodge the spears of others, as David did, not literally of course, hopefully, uh, but spears come in all kinds of shapes and sizes opposition, a challenge to our lives. Perhaps you're feeling like you are forever running in the opposite direction, wondering how on earth it's, it's ever going to come about, just like David must have felt. He was continually running and hiding from King Saul. So David had to guard his own heart to remain strong in the Lord without things like hatred and revenge and fear and intimidation and even discouragement and frustration, you know, entering into his heart. And so do you, no matter what happens around you, guard your own heart. Remain steadfast in trusting God. Stay in that place of being anchored in hope and faith. And in those times when you don't know or understand exactly what's going on, we need to guard our heart, allowing the Holy Spirit to do whatever deep work he needs to do within us. It's in that place sometimes of not knowing, not understanding, that God is actually doing something deep within us personally. And I've been encouraged by hearing people say, you know, just lately even, saying things like, I don't understand everything that's going on in this season, but all I can do is say, God, what, what are you doing in me through all of this? And that's probably the best response that we can have. Because he cares about you. 
He wants the very best for your life. And that might require some sifting, some renewing of your mind, some strengthening of your heart, building up that measure of the gift of faith within you. It can be a time of trusting God, but I don't think that means just you know trusting and, and waiting upon God, but it's not just doesn't mean you just sit on the sidelines passively. We have to learn to how to lean into our times of uncertainty, to discern what is happening in us, what's happening in us and around us. And it's more than just waiting for the next season to come. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So waiting here, as, as we've probably heard many times before, it's about entwining ourselves in God's presence, leaning into him, looking and listening to what he is saying as the seasons shift and change. It's strengthening, it's empowering, it brings hope and expectan expectancy and it anchors you. Plus God will send others to stand by you and with you as well. During David's time of transition, God sent many strong men of valour and mighty men of war to stand with David. The Bible mentions 200 uh, men of Issachar who were part of those mighty men who were called to stand with him. And in 1 Chronicles 12.32, it says, Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. So here we have these 200 chiefs who understand the times and seasons that they were in. They knew what, what ought to be done. They had wisdom and they had discernment. And they also had a vast number of men at their command. What a wonderful gift that must have been for David at that time. What an encouragement from God. And you know what? We, we all need that kind of encouragement. And I feel that the Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning that just as these mighty men of understanding of the times gathered around David, now is a season and a time for mighty men and women with understanding of the times to gather together as Christ's church, to gather around one another, to bring our faith, wisdom and discernment to the body of Christ together and see then the influence, that influence flow out into the world around us. None of us know and understand everything and be really wary of anyone who says that they do but together as we each bring what we do have then the pieces of the picture come together as a whole it's how God designed it to be together each one comes and we are living in those that in, we are living in the times that Joel prophesied about where God is pouring out of his spirit on all flesh. This, these are the days that he was talking about. In Acts 2, 16 to 18, it says, But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I've been having a lot more dreams lately. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out of my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. So we need to uphold this vision in this season and these times. It's a vision of who we really are, as, uh, in, who we are in Christ as the body together. Each one with the giftings, each one you know, with the spirit of God being poured out. We are Christ's mighty army. We are his ambassadors and we are definitely not lone rangers. You know, Vanessa and I feel particularly connected to you guys, to Arise Church. I know that we haven't met some of you, but we feel really connected here to this church. And also to Heartlands Church in Casino, another INC church locally, which is also thriving in this in this season and of course we we are we are belong we belong down at seacoast as well but together together we are blood-bought children of god holy spirit filled sons and daughters fully adopted into the lineage of christ and without that vision without a vision 
of being together, of God's outpouring of his spirit. You know, the vision of, the, as we uphold the word of God, both generic, shared, a shared vision as children of God, but also a personal vision for the individual seasons that, we, that each one of us are living in. The Bible has this to say in Proverbs 29, 18. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. So revelation, vision, divine guidance, seeing what God is doing, this is exactly what we need for these times and the seasons that we are in. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose, under heaven. So my encouragement, I guess, this morning is actually more than, it's more than an encouragement. It's, it's vital, I believe, that we grasp this and live this out in our life. And that is, we need to understand when seasons come and go, when they change, and very importantly, what the purpose of a season is. There's a time for every purpose under heaven. So what is, your, what is the purpose of your season right now? Or if you are in, in a time of transition, what is the purpose of the changing seasons? What are, you, what are you about to step into? Are you ready to embrace the change? And what is God doing in you in the process? The sons of Issachar understood the times and the seasons. They knew what Israel meant, was meant to do. Well, we need to know what the Church of Jesus Christ is meant to do. We need to know corporately together and we need to know personally. And of course, we, we know that we are to bring Jesus Christ to the world. But just like David and his men, we need wisdom. We need strategies. We need you know, to understand timing, all these things, because the world that we live in is very different to what it, is, it has ever been. The world around us is changing rapidly and it could even change suddenly. You know, it certainly changed suddenly for the, all the families that were involved in what happened in Sydney yesterday. What a tragic thing. And the many, many families that, that would have been affected by that. And, you know, we need to, to come through that. I don't know how people without God come through it, but as Christians... We need to know that we're anchored. We're anchored in faith. We're anchored in, in heaven. We're anchored in eternity. You know, the future could be very, very challenging, but it could also be an incredible opportunity. And as we walk in the Spirit, inviting him closer, allowing him to recreate us every day, being filled with his fire and his love, he will do it through us there's a, an ancient prayer that I learned on the walk to Emmaus I know some of you here have been on that same it's a spiritual kind of weekend retreat and uh, this prayer says this it says come Holy Spirit fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. It's an ancient prayer and it's a powerful, profound prayer. So Lord, let us, let us be created and fashioned and moulded according to your plans and your purposes and, this, and the seasons that we are destined to step into. You know, Jesus himself experienced many transitions. He was entering Jerusalem. He was, he was transitioning from his earthly ministry to entering into that time where he would fulfill his ultimate calling, which involves his suffering and death at Golgotha. And it's a monumental shift. As he enters the city of Jerusalem, he weeps. He speaks to all those who are not able to comprehend and or understand their season. And it's tragic Luke 19, 41 to 44 says, Now as he, as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. If you had known, 
even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on, in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in... They will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. I find those verses really distressing. Imagine the reality of that occurring. This was a, a terrible consequence of the people of Jerusalem not discerning the season of their Messiah's coming. Salvation was standing right in front of them, speaking to them, preaching with them, pleading with them, revealing God's sovereign love and mercy through miracles, through healing, signs and wonders, prophetic revelation, and yet they did not see him nor the day that they were living in. In AD 70, the temple was destroyed. There are accounts from that time that say that you would not even know that there was a temple built there, not one stone upon another. I've just read an, an historic novel um, about the times of the Israelites when the Israelites returned to Jerusalem uh, after 70 years of captivity. Now, this is hundreds of years earlier than this story where Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. This is, um, this is after Nebuchadnezzar had completely destroyed the whole city of Jerusalem back then. And the pain and the grief and the trauma the strained relationships we can only imagine. And I should just think back to what Kate was saying when she was sharing our communion message this, this morning um, about feeling the emotions, the feelings. When she read through uh, the Easter story just recently, it was the feelings that really rose up for her. Well, I, 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 we need to feel. We need to feel those feelings. We need to allow the words to come to life in such a way that we experience um, how, how it must have been and feel that. <clears throat> anyway, I was reading this book and um, it helped me to connect with the human, emotional, spiritual and relational anguish of the people. And we can tend to read these biblical accounts and easily be emotionally detached from them. But these were people's lives, their hopes, their dreams, for their families, for their future, and it was all destroyed. The temple was, um, was where they met with the presence of God. But coming back to Jesus' prophecy, that time when he was entering Jerusalem and he spoke prophetically over the city, it's important that we see the pain and the broken heart of Jesus as he weeps and as he speaks these things over Jerusalem. Now, I, I know this is a pretty, pretty heavy example of a missed season but I pray that we would not miss our time of visitation of God's word and truth upon our lives the Holy Spirit's leading and he want, what he wants us to understand in this our time and our season let's not miss our season as a church as believers in our nation let me bring you back also to, um, to a personal level let's not miss our season individually it's like each one of us is experiencing a season personally within our, you know, Christian walk as, as the body of Christ. But, you know, we have a season that we're going through, through personally. Again, what, what is the season that you are in right now? What is happening within you? Have you been able to lean in and, and find strength with God and, and with his word? Do you feel like you, you are mounting up with wings as an eagle or are you struggling to face an unknown future? There's no condemnation here, but without facing the reality of where we are at, how can we then begin to move forward and transition into what is ahead? Who do you recognise as someone that God has brought around you to lift up your arms, to stand with you in faith, and to bring understanding of the times so that you know what to do? Who are your sons of Issachar? Are you entwining yourself in God's word, building your faith and trust in him as you wait? Are you able to identify the spiritual gifts 
or gift that the Holy Spirit is breathing upon you in this season of your life because the gifts that he wants you to move in and exhibit and display may be different from the gifts of a past season. Is it faith itself that needs stirring up? Because God says faith is a gift. Each one of us has a measure of faith. And we can pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We can pray for more discernment, more prophetic insight, more grace, more wisdom. We can pray for more faith. This is a time where it's being poured out, poured out upon men and women. There's a great scripture um, from the prophet Habakkuk, just as I close the message, my message this morning. And interestingly enough, in the New King James Version, it has the heading, The Just Shall Live by Faith. And it's speaking about vision. Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3, it says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. This is a specific word, I believe, for some this morning. It's an ancient prophecy and it's speaking into our lives right now, thousands of years later. You see, seasons, times, visions, they're all connected together. Maybe God is saying to some of you this morning, I want you to actually start writing down your vision. Write down what you see of the coming season of your life. And as you write, discernment will come, understanding will come, and you will be anchored regardless of the challenges ahead. And at the right time, your vision will speak. It, it has a voice. It is, it is a declaration. Wait for it. Entwine yourself with it. Add your faith and expectancy to it. Trust in it. It will surely come. A vision has the ability to stir up passion and excitement because it's God's vision for your life, not your own. I don't want my own vision for my life. I want God's vision. Maybe there's a stepping out, taping, taking small steps towards your vision. Maybe there's some kind of preparation in the time of transition. Wait and see what God does as you step out. Look for his encouragement. Look for his provision. The seasons and the times in life are no surprise to God. And he is so willing to reveal his heart, his purposes to you through the vision he has already placed within you. It's in there. It's in there. We just need to draw it out. Seek him. Entwine yourself with him. Trust him. Let go of what has been and embrace what is yet to come. We live in a time of Joel's prophecy, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. This is a time for mounting up with wings as eagles. And from up there, you can see forever. Amen. Let me pray. Holy Spirit, stir our hearts this morning. For those particularly who are coming to the end, the end of a season of life, maybe coming into a, a time of transition, a time of uncertainty, where the next season hasn't actually begun yet, I particularly pray for those ones, Lord, that you would be their rock, that they would know that they are anchored, anchored in faith, anchored in God, anchored in Christ, anchored in heaven. Immovable, steady, strong, steadfast. I thank you, Lord, that you are declaring this over your church this morning. You are speaking life, life into each one of us. You're speaking life into a rise church, breathing newness of life, freshness of life freshness of the Holy Spirit upon your church. Pray that each one of us, Lord, has a heart that is open, willing to
to search out the depths of our innermost being. In the process of it all, Lord, the question is, what are you doing in me? What are you doing within me as I go through this change from one season to to the next? I pray, Lord God, for your covering and protection and blessing over each one here this morning as they continue on with the journey of life. And for those who are settled in a season and, um, you know, they know that their purpose, what their purpose is for now, I pray, Lord God, for when the time does come and the seasons change, that you would be there. You go ahead and you prepare the way and carry us through from one season to the next. We love you, Lord God. We love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the faith that you've placed within our hearts. I thank you for the life that we have, which is eternal. I give you all the thanks and praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.